Elder Scrolls 6 might be coming to Xbox Game Pass, Rust servers catches fire and Naughty Dog is working on a new multiplayer game. Hey what's up guys welcome to a new video of Gamer Connect. My name is Gaming Manis and you guys are watching top gaming news of this week. It's apparently on fire. First of all, if you didn't know, Metro 2033 is right now free on Steam and that offer stands still today only. That is if you're watching this video on March 15th. Not only that, the other two Metro games that is Metro Last Light and Metro Exodus are also on a huge discount sale. Again, that ends up tonight. Metro games are based on a novel by Dmitry Grukovsky and is set in a post-apocalyptic setting. It is also a shooter game where you have limited ammo and you need to look around to get more ammo. Otherwise, you will have a real hard time to play the game. However, Metro 2033 is the original version of the game. There is also Metro 2033 Redux which is a remaster of the original as you play the game in the same engine that of Metro Last Light with better textures and this game you will need to buy which is right now again being sold at an amazing discount of 80% off. So it's a win anyway. Metro in my opinion is one of the best post-apocalyptic shooter games that is made. It has some really cool storylines and some really cool moments. Might even have a little bit of scary moments because you, you wander around in the dark and you also do some things in the dark. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna describe the game now. So get it right now before it goes away because today is the last day. Otherwise you have to wait the next 6 months to get some more offers. Last week we saw the announcement that Microsoft has acquired ZeniMax, the owner of Bethesda which means more games are coming to Xbox Game Pass. That's the only reason we are being happy about, right? It's not only Bethesda that's joining Microsoft but it's also ID Software who made Doom, Arcane who made games like Prey and Dishonored and the upcoming Deathloop, Machine Games who made Wolfenstein games, Tango Gameworks who made Evil Within, Alpha Dog and Roundhouse Studios. With Microsoft acquiring ZeniMax, it gives all these studios a foundation to continue working on their games and Phil Spencer even says that this is one of the ways to make Xbox an inclusive platform for all players. Right now there are many games from Bethesda joining Xbox Game Pass and you can play them right now. Those games are all the Doom games, the Dishonored games, Wolfenstein games, we have Rage 2, Prey, Evil Within, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Steel Dawn, there's also Skyrim Special Edition that you can get from Xbox Game Pass. There's also a really cool bundle going on for sale which is Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition and a Skyrim Special Edition which is in a very decent price and in a very good discount so if you want to get that, you can do that as well. Otherwise, you can just play Skyrim Special Edition just using the Xbox Game Pass. Now with this, it could be very much possible that the next future games that is Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield and maybe the next Indiana Jones, the new Indiana Jones might even be coming to Xbox Game Pass. Not only that, on the first day of launch so that everybody gets to play. I think that will be really really cool to have but at the moment, nothing has been talked about on those games yet. Along with that, the question comes whether these games will be coming out in PlayStation or no. I mean Xbox can make these games exclusive to PC and Xbox if they wanted to but at the moment, that is also not very clear. Although Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo will be PlayStation 5 exclusive as that was stated before the acquisition itself. Maybe later this week we will get to know about what's happening with Microsoft and Bethesda even more and their future games. Or we will just get all the games exclusive to Xbox. Last week there was a huge fire in Strasbourg data center that hosted Rust servers. This fire was insane and the Rust producer couldn't believe that something like this could happen. Because of this, servers went down obviously. Usually when a server goes down, the face punch team is able to fix them easily because those are pretty normal. This one however was extreme. This fire was so large that they had to use a pump boat to ensure enough water could flow to the firefighters and that went on all night until morning. It took all night to take that fire out of that building. With that, the producer was sure that they needed to bring back servers online otherwise people will start complaining. On top of that, those weren't the only people who were looking for a data center because there were much more uh, websites which are hosted in that data center as well and those went off too. So now the stock of OVH data centers were going away. 
In the end, they had to settle with the OVH Poland data center to host the servers, which is around 1000 kilometers away from the original server setup. Within 11 hours of the servers down, Facepunch team was able to bring back servers. Facepunch also had local and on-site backups to bring back the data to these servers. However, player progression wasn't in the on-site backup, which the producer said that they now need to do that and it was an honest mistake from their end. I think at this point it's very unfortunate that something like this happened. I mean, of course you will definitely expect servers going down, but you would never expect a fire breaking through the building of the data center where the servers are being set up. That is something that nobody can predict and that is exactly what happened. Luckily the team was prepared and they were able to fix this. Apparently the team only came to know about the fire when they wake up in the morning. So actually they took 4 hours to fix all of this which means bring back the servers in literally 4 hours which is absolutely insane. Some players were upset that the player progression was taken away as the game runs in real time whether you are locked in or not but in general most of the people did understand that it, this was an exception something that they even couldn't handle. Well the good thing is that they were able to bring back the servers on the same day that is amazing. And maybe the server, uh, the data center is farther away from the original location, but at least it's there. Last week I talked about how there are some frustrations building up in the development of Dying Light 2. And boom! Now we are getting a Dying Light 2 update this Wednesday. Which means we might even get a gameplay reveal, or maybe something that's happening in the story, or something more. Yeah, I think the game is getting delayed again. Apparently it's going to be focused on the development process of the game than the gameplay or about the game's story and things like that. Even that is something better than nothing because at least we'll get to know what the development process is. Not only that, one of the representatives from Dying Light 2 said that the title is far from being in development hell and was just announced too early. So I think this one is a cyberpunk light then. Maybe things will change as the game is moving forward and it could be very much possible that the game will be released on 2022 instead of this year. As well the representative himself said, they announced it too early. Well of course we'll get to more about Dying Light 2 this Wednesday. But instead of talking about Dying Light 2, let's talk about Dying Light 1. What do you think about this game? Do you think it is actually one of the best post-apocalyptic zombie survival open world game? Let me know in the comments below because I think it is. I think everybody should play this game if you're a fan of zombies. Which I think 90% of the people are. So let me know in the comments below. Well even though Dying Light 2 might not be sure about when they can release a game, but it looks like Naughty Dog is 100% sure about making a multiplayer game. A position for economy designer was posted in Naughty Dog's website which mentioned candidates will ensure robust longevity for studio's game as well as design, implement and tune game economy and player progression system. The listing also says that candidates will create avenues for self-expression for our players suggesting that the game might have customization. So it looks like this mystery multiplayer game might be a live service game which will go on for years and it might also have some kind of storyline with it which will give some rewards to the players. So it looks like it's Last of Us Part 2 multiplayer then huh? Actually no it's not, it's not Last of Us Part 2 multiplayer because Naughty Dog already told that there will be no multiplayer for Last of Us Part 2. After Last of Us multiplayer game being a failure which I still don't understand why they ever made it, they announced that Last of Us Part 2 won't be having a multiplayer version. Although they did mention that players will experience what their team's ambitions are for multiplayer in the future but not as a part of The Last of Us Part 2. So this could mean two things, either they're working on a new multiplayer game or they're working on a spin-off version of The Last of Us Part 2 without having the same characters in it. It's gonna be characters which we never knew and we don't know their names and it's just there. Now I'm one of those guys who do not care about multiplayer from Naughty Dog because I believe that Naughty Dog is very good in story games. Many of them are controversial or maybe just one of them. But I still believe that they're doing story games in a brilliant fashion and they should continue doing this instead of focusing on the multiplayer aspects. Well what do you guys think? Do you think that there should be a multiplayer game from a Naughty Dog studio? Let me know in the comments below and do you want Last of Us Part 2 to have a multiplayer? Which oh, I, why, I do not know why that idea came up with but yeah, yeah let me know in the comments below. For me it's a no. Plain no.
Well, thank you everybody for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, leave a like, comment down below whatever you think about all the news we just discussed earlier. And do not forget to subscribe because that helps us to reach higher goals, to get new people and get you these news every single week. Well, my name is Gin Manus and I shall see you guys next week. Until then, keep awesome, play games and have fun.